Hello! Happy creative ice cream day! Well actually, it's Happy Canada Day, fun fact, as well as International Joke Day. So, joke's on you, I'm always a joke. That's... That's the content you'll get if you follow me on Twitter. Happy first day of veg, everybody. So I'm doing a video every day in July, and this is the first one. So I figured to start off this month of me, I guess, <laughs> I would let you get to know me a little better. So I've done a seven facts video, but today I wanted to share some information like personality types and stuff like that. You'll, you'll learn about me and maybe I can learn about you in the comments so we can compare and see if we'd be destined to be best friends. I'm going to start off with the things that I don't necessarily agree with because they're out of our control and so I don't see how it applies to me but I also do think that if you do believe it, it probably could work out in your life. It's just, it's a, I don't know, I don't know. So we're just, we're just gonna start. First thing is I am a rat. I am human, that is correct, but in the Chinese zodiac, I am a rat. So that's pretty fun. I always assumed that meant I was really nosy. I don't feel nosy, but maybe I am. <laughs> the second one is my astrology sign. So I'm a Capricorn. And I do not agree with it whatsoever. <laughs> Capricorns are renowned workaholics, and I am not that. I want to do everything but work. So that's that. I often feel like I relate more to a Sagittarius, which makes sense because I'm right on the edge, but it's all... It, it's all crap anyway. <laughs> okay, and now for the more the fun things that I guess are a little more serious. Not serious, but like I actually kind of, I understand like because there's a test and it's based on your personality, it's not just a random happenstance on when you were born. Some of these I will delve into more later because a lot, I like to self-reflect and think about what they mean and how they apply to me. This is kind of just a general overview of what I am. I am a Gryffindor in the Hogwarts houses. I've made my peace with it, but I, I I, have always wanted to be a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are so cool, and they're so nice, and they're so awesome, and like, I feel like I should be a Hufflepuff, but I'm a Gryffindor. But then I guess like, it makes sense, like I understand why I'd be a Gryffindor. But then again, like, shouldn't I be in whatever house I want to be in because Harry Potter got to do that? Like, can't I just tell the sorting hat, like, hey, I want to be in, in Hufflepuff. How come the test doesn't ask you which one you want to be in? Or maybe it does. I don't know. But anyways, I'm a Gryffindor. In Ilvermorny, I'm a Thunderbird. Also, incredibly stereotypical, it feels like. <laughs> I am just, I, everyone wants to be in Gryffindor, and it seems like everyone would want to be in Thunderbird. I want it to be in Pukwudgie, and everyone who's in Pukwudgie is just like, well, I'm a Pukwudgie, but like, come on. And plus, okay, Hufflepuff, you got Eddie Redmayne, and he is, he's amazing. <laughs> While we're on this Harry Potter topic, I'll just share some of the fandoms that I'm in. So I'm in The Office, I, I, okay. I don't know any of these fancy names. Of course, there's like, okay, okay, well, <laughs> I'll save my rants for when we get to them. Um, so I am not going to use any of the fancy names, but I'll just share off some things that I like that kind of have fandoms. So I love The Office. I watched that earlier this year. I think it's great. I love Pam and Jim. They are my OTP. Like, and people just throw that around, but if I could only cheer for one couple in the fictional universe, it would be Pam and Jim. They are amazing and they are everything I aim to be. <laughs> I love Harry Potter, just like that. I have read the first like four books a bajillion times, but I've only read it all the way through once. And the only book I read before I saw the movie was the very, very, very last Harry Potter movie. I, I read, I finished number seven before they finished making number seven, or number seven part two, or number eight, however you want to say that. So I feel like kind of a wimp there, but I grew up with it. Harry Potter was read to me every day before, every day before bed, like I just, it's great. I love Chuck. Chuck is 
I feel like more on the DL. I feel like people don't appreciate Chuck the way they should because it is amazing and I don't care. It does get a little rough after season two, but then the last season you cry and the characters are just great and you just get so invested. I have yet to find something. I'm on the search. I watched so many things in hopes to find something like Chuck. I'm kind of dabbling in white collar right now. It's not the same. Like, it's not... Uh, I just don't... I don't have that love. I, I love Chuck Bartowski. He is amazing. I also love Sherlock. It's great. It's my jam. Benedict Cumberbatch is amazing. So yeah, there's that. That's kind of all I have to say about that. Okay, but why are they called Sherlockians? Shouldn't they be called homies? Because Sherlock Holmes, homies, Sherlockians? Are, is that the best you can come up with? Okay, we're done we're done with that rant because it just it's short but it makes me upset. I also love anything by John Green. <laughs> anything. I will read anything by John Green. And so, you know, The Fault in Our Stars, Paper Towns, Abundance of Catherines, they're all good. He collaborated with like a bunch of other people on like these winter romances and I bought it, of course. So <laughs> anything by him. I was a very devout, devout, devout Hunger Games fan. I loved Hunger Games. Before the movie came out, I dressed up as Katniss for Halloween and my mom took pictures of me in the forest and everyone thought I was the actress and I was freaking out because it was great. I was perfect. And that was before, you know, you even had the movie image of Katniss. Like I was I'm really proud of that. When I saw the first movie, I almost fainted when the words popped up on the screen. Like, I was so excited. I was also a huge Divergent fan. And that, it's so heartbreaking. <laughs> because I loved it. I remember reading the first book. And I remember exactly where I was and how awesome I thought it was. And then the movie just didn't do it any justice like at all. And then Allegiant came out and I was so upset at the ending. And then she started doing the whole thing with Four and when she's just not that good of a writer to be able to portray Four and it just wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. <laughs> and then the last thing I can think of off the top of my head is Percy Jackson. I am a Percy Jackson fan. I have not read The Trials of Apollo yet, but I want to. And Percy Jackson is like amazing. And when I was 13, when I first read the books, he was 13. And then when I was 16, he was 16. And he was looking so fun on the cover photo. I love Percy Jackson. And Leo is like my man. And Nico is like my man. And I just, I love them all, <laughs> okay? Okay, so that was all for the fandoms, and now I have two last things that I feel like apply to me a lot more than the other things. Um, but I, in the Myers-Briggs test, where you have four letters, I am an ENFP. That means I'm extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and perceiving. So it's very similar to, like, what my Enneagram is, but um, basically I'm, yeah, extroverted, like to have fun, care about what people think, all those good things. And I, I loved Myers Bits for the longest time. Like, I lived by it almost. Because, like, I just, I think it's really interesting to see how other people think and how I think. But there were a lot of things that I related to, but there wasn't anything new to me, it seemed like. I, like, nothing I read was, like, a revelation. Like, oh, that's so right about myself. Then I watched Tessa Violet's video about the Enneagram test. And I am a newbie at it, but I didn't take the test, but she just had um, a list. She just, she posted a website and it kind of had an overview of all the ones. And she's like, honestly, just choose yourself. And I, I'm a number seven. And I want to go into more detail on this in another time. But when I was reading that description, it felt like I was being stripped down to the bones and that someone was like seeing the parts of me that I didn't want people to see. And it kind of like, Ooh, it gave me chills like reading it because it was so, I don't know, it's so interesting. And my friend who's also an ENFP and we are so similar has a different Enneagram test and um, it's just, it's really cool to see the differences in us and how that correlated to that. 
Also, I took the Strength Finder Leadership Test and it gives you your top five strengths. You can pay more and get all 34, like their exact order. And that one is really cool because there's like, I don't remember the numbers, but it's a, a number, it's I think like four billion out of one chance, like one out of four billion chance to have someone have the same top five as you. And then, you know, trillions to have the same 34. And I think that is so cool because it's like so much more unique than everything else. And so I was number one, positive, number two, a wooer, number three, communication, number four, includer, and number five, strategic thinker. And those also like made a lot of sense to me because I am very much so an includer. Like that's the one that bugs me the most. And um, it when someone's not being included. And so yeah <laughs> so that was a mouthful and I hope this video isn't too long um but because I want to go more into detail on it later like I could talk for ages on this but once I kind of have like something I really want to say I want to I want to share more about it because I love learning about myself and yeah so if you guys have any of those same things any different things if you have done this like research on yourself let me know down below because i would love to know what you guys are like um okay well thank you for watching this is the first day of edge and i will see you later bye